All right, so we are doing a quick update because I've got like seven minutes until I have to get inside the hospital to do my pre-admit appointment, all my blood work and things like that. Um, so it's July 6th right now. Our original C-section date was scheduled for July 11th, so next Tuesday. But I went in yesterday for my, just my weekly appointment, and my blood pressure was quite high. Much higher than usual for me. <laughs> so my doctor was a bit concerned about that, and just with me being 35 during this pregnancy, you know, this is when like the hypertensive disorders, diseases, whatever you want to call them, start to kind of crop up. I've also had swelling in my face, which I feel like has been very prominent in these videos that I've posted recently, as well as in my hands, my ankles, like pretty much everywhere. I'm swelling everywhere. So um, just taking all of this into consideration, my doctor was like, you know what? I think we should just go ahead and move up your, your C-section date. And so she said she would call the hospital and see what they had open. And so it's been moved to July 7th at 7.30 in the morning. So we got lots of sevens, lots of sevens going on. But that's kind of been the journey so far with this. So of course my husband and I got this news yesterday because they were saying, you know, that it could have been today if the hospital had had an opening today or that it could have been um, Friday. And so it looks like it's gonna be Friday, but she's my doctor has given me like warning signals like if my blood pressure gets to a certain number then I should just come to the hospital straight away and in that case it would be more of an emergency <laughs> situation so I've been keeping an eye on my blood pressure it was pretty high this morning when I woke up which is which is strange but I've pretty much taken it like every hour and it's it was normal the last time I checked it. So I'm not really sure what's going on. I don't feel stressed or <laughs> anxious at all. So I don't know if it's just my body's way of telling me, you know, the sooner the better. But yeah, that is the update <laughs> on baby girl and my body <laughs> and what is going on with this pregnancy. So we definitely had to move around our plans and my husband's trying to get everything all finished up for work because he wasn't going to take paternity leave until the 10th so yeah it's been on on that end it's been a little bit hectic and i'm just trying to you know keep my legs elevated and keep myself calm and not do very much and i didn't know i was gonna have to come in to do to do this uh appointment so I do have my hospital bags in the back of the car. So I have baby girl's hospital bag and my own. And I brought my camera, obviously, made sure all my batteries were charged. <laughs> and my husband is working from home today, so he's finishing up his calls. But, you know, I told him, I was like, just stay, stay by your phone, just in case, because if my blood pressure is out of this world, when I go in there and they're doing all the checks and everything, I don't know like I don't know how this works they could they could admit me when I go in there so <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> I'm just trying to like ride the wave of it you know what I mean but I feel good and baby girl's been kicking and moving a lot so I, I feel like she is she is ready to come out and and join the world but yeah I now have four minutes uh, to get inside and start this whole blood work process so wish me luck and I guess we'll see when I come back for another update. Good morning. It is way too early to be awake right now. <laughs> it's 4.30 in the morning and today is the day. Today is the day. How many days early is it? Four? Yeah, four days early. Saturday, Sunday, four. Monday, Tuesday. Oh, well, actually five. For delivery day, it's nine days. Well, due date, you mean? Yeah, due date. Yeah. Yeah, not the date. Delivery date, or due date was nine days, but the original C-section appointment was supposed to be four days later. So we made it to 38 weeks and six days. So we almost made it to 39 weeks. This is <laughs> no makeup, hair up. I washed with my special soap last night and this morning. Um, not allowed to have any food 
and I can still have water, thank goodness, because I am parched and I have to drink a special pre-surgery drink on my way to the hospital. So we're leaving in about mm, like 10 minutes-ish, 4.56, yeah. 10 minutes, but we have our bags packed and I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? <laughs> good? I'm so pregnant. Ready? Good? Ready? Ready? Go. Yeah. Yay! Are you Let's tired? Did you sleep well? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Sweet girls know something's up. Huh. Yeah, you know. You know. I missed you guys last night. I had to sleep. Sleep in a very, very clean bed with no pet hair. No pet hair, huh? We'll be back in a couple days. Okay, so it's 5.40 and I just had to do another wipe down and now I'm in my gown with my fancy socks. Those wipes, like, they take off, like, a layer, a layer of, skin. of skin. Yeah. So my skin feels extra dry right now. It is two weeks postpartum. We have Ivy's checkup. So it's her two week doctor's appointment and we're running a little bit late. So super quick intro, but I gotta go get in the car. Okay, I'm doing a quick test of the audio to see if the pumps, <laughs> my wearable pumps, if the sound is too loud because it, it sounds really loud to me and I don't know how it's coming across on the camera. Seems we're getting up close and personal, what with the pumping and the breast milk and all of that. But we are back from Ivy's doctor's appointment. So she had her second, her two week pediatric appointment. Everything looks good. So that's great. Baby girl is healthy. Everything is moving along quite nicely. I wrote down what I wanted to mention in this clip because I am slightly uh, sleep deprived so I'm trying to keep all of my all of my thoughts together. I had my appointment with the OB for my was it my two week checkup as well? I think so. I can't remember. Anyways, probably because it's only been about two weeks, although it feels much longer than that. But my appointment went really well. I had my bandage taken off, which I can't remember if that was at my first appointment. Yeah, I had the bandage taken off at my first appointment, which was such a relief because I feel like the stickiness of it was kind of messing with the, the I don't know, the incision and it was kind of painful. So I was really happy to finally have that bandage taken off of my C-section scar. Um, and it's healing really nicely. She did a really great job. So 
really happy with that and at this last appointment i'm cleared to go on short walks jaunts around the neighborhood i'm allowed to push the stroller i'm obviously allowed to carry ivy and uh, as well as in her car seat but i'm still not supposed to drive and i'm also not supposed to go to the gym or like ride the peloton or do any kind of heavy lifting not allowed to go up the stairs so there's still a lot of things i'm restricted on but i'm happy i can at least get outside and go for walks so my husband and i have been taking advantage of the fact that i can go on walks and it's a way for me to for both of us to get outside to spend some time together and ivy really likes her stroller so we've been putting her in the bassinet and then we have the little bug shield or the bug net I guess that goes over it um, and we just do a quick quick walk around the neighborhood and then well I, I shouldn't say quick because I'm still walking kind of slow because <laughs> I don't want to overdo it that's been going really well we've been waiting until later in the evening like around 8 39 o'clock when the sun has gone down just because it has been so hot here in Texas we have been in the 100s it's been so humid and the rain clouds, the storm clouds have been teasing us because they keep, they just hover and then they disappear. And I'm like, I would just like a little bit of rain or a massive thunderstorm. That would be, that would be incredible. <laughs> so as far as our routine has gone, we actually are in a bit of a routine. And that's a huge thanks to the baby tracker app because at the hospital those first so I was in the hospital for 48 hours and then I was cleared to go home because my blood pressure was normal and everything was looking good and we had gotten the feeding schedule down and everything like that so at the hospital they have you track the kind of like the sleep cycle as well as the feeding cycle and how much baby is you know eating and also if she has like a wet diaper a dirty diaper how frequently this is happening so um, those 48 hours in the hospital were really interesting i feel like i didn't sleep at all just because it was like a revolving door i kept getting pain medication given to me and just like they were doing my vitals and my checks so that was that was an interesting experience um very sleepless nights hospital beds are not comfortable and then my poor husband was on that terrible couch situation that they have in there so i know his back was definitely hurting <laughs> after sleeping in there for two nights but because we had been tracking all of that i was like i you know we should continue to do this at home so we can kind of see what the patterns are and there actually is a pattern which has been really helpful so now that we're you know over two weeks in we're able to look at that app and kind of see okay she normally goes down around this time and she sleeps for this long and this is when she gets up or when we need to wake her up and you know get her fed and get her diaper changed and so we're we're in more of a routine now which has been really nice for me because kind of like the sporadic um like cluster feeding and all of that like that was a lot <laughs> it's a lot to go through like mentally and emotionally when you're first of all sleep deprived second of all in just a lot of pain and you have all these hormones coursing through your body so the first week was definitely the most difficult week for me because i was in quite a bit of pain that third fourth day with my incision like it, it hurt. Um, I was definitely taking the pain meds and even then it's still just, it was painful. After that, I started to see the light, especially after I got that bandage off and, you know, heard that everything was healing just fine. That made me, that reassured me and made me feel a lot better. So while the sleep is broken, and I will die on this hill. <laughs> it is so much better. Like sleeping when you have a newborn is so much better than pregnancy sleep. Again, I will die on that hill because pregnancy sleep is the absolute worst. You don't actually feel rested. And for me, having gestational hypertension, I was holding on to so much extra fluid. My heart rate was high. My blood pressure was high. I was not sleeping soundly at all. Not to mention you're getting up every you know couple hours to go to the bathroom. So that's been such a relief to actually lay down and not have to get up to go to go pee in the middle of the night. Although I will say I still do get up because I'm keeping myself hydrated because I am pumping, which kind of brings me to the next thing. So <laughs> while we were in the hospital, I, I was breastfeeding Ivy and it went really well for the first day. And then the second day I had like no 
colostrum, colostrum, however you say it, like it just wasn't there. And she was screaming her head off like she was so hungry. And I felt so bad because I felt like there was nothing I could do. Oftentimes when you have a C-section it and even just a, you know a vaginal birth, it takes time for the, the milk to come in. But especially because her due date was July 16th and she came on July 7th, there was quite a quite a range there, right? So quite a gap. And so my my milk just hadn't hadn't come in yet. So we supplemented with formula and so I'm at the point now where I'm pumping and there's just the whole thing with nipple confusion between the pacifiers because she loves her pacifier and so she's been drinking from a bottle. And so I'm not currently breastfeeding, although I would like to to try to do that, but I am pumping so she can have breast milk. So the pumping thing seems to be seems to be working for me, for us, and kind of for our schedule. So I think that that's what I'm going to stick with. That's what I was, that's what I was doing earlier in this vlog with my Willow Go, which at first this did not, it was not suctioning enough to pull anything out and I had to get a Spectra S2, I think it is. Spectra S2, which is like the hospital grade suction. And that worked, that worked really well. But now I'm at the point because we're, you know, usually it's eight to 10 days is when, your milk is supposed to come in and so I'm you know we're way past that now and so it's it's here it's still the transitional milk but it's it's here and I'm able to use the wearable breast pumps which this is such a relief because I can just walk around the house and do stuff and I don't have to be plugged into the wall <laughs> like I do with the Spectra. So like I said the first week was the hardest mostly because of the pain I also had just the the hormones right like it was insane because i really wasn't that hormonal while i was pregnant or at least in my mind i wasn't i should probably ask my husband but like of course i had my moments but i don't think i was that hormonal but man that first week postpartum i would i was just crying like for no reason um it really felt like no reason and i was just like upset and sad and then i and then i would be fine and then i would it, you know baby blues right i would just be upset and sad again and i would think about her delivery and i would get like sad about it and i'm like why am i sad about this it was it was such a beautiful thing right so hormones are crazy hormones are weird um because i'm usually a very like sprightly happy person so to be morose and sad and upset and crying is just so it's just so out of my nature. It's just not something that I'm normally, I don't know, that that's not really me. So that was that was a bit of a, a shock to my system, if you will, to just be, especially to be upset over what felt like nothing and to not be able to control the, those emotions and those, those feelings and the tears. But I just, I let myself cry. I let myself be sad and things have been way better, <laughs> so. If you're in that first week postpartum, hang on, it gets better. Just just hang on a little longer, hang in there. Um, okay, so by around day 10, I started to kind of like see the light because my milk was coming in and I started to understand her routine and her patterns. And so then I felt like I was able to kind of have a bit more of a schedule and get back to the stuff that lights me up. Because for those, you know, the first week, well, really the whole newborn stage, you're just so focused on this little bundle of joy that you've, you know, brought into the world that you're not really, you're not really taking care of yourself. You're not really focusing on yourself. This is like the first time I've actually put makeup on. I lied actually second or third time. Cause I, whenever we go to a doctor's appointment, I like to kind of put myself together, but you can tell, like, I don't have any product in my hair. Like it was up in a bun and we just, we just threw it up half up, half down today to go to her next appointment. So yeah, the self care thing can kind of go can kind of go out the window as well as just the stuff that you know you love to do. So during her sleep windows, which are actually she sleeps really well, she f eats really well, she sleeps really well. She I we're understanding her cues, so we know when she needs a diaper change, when she's hungry, when she's uncomfortable, when she's gassy, when she's tired. So she has these different cries for everything, and we're able to recognize that, and that's helped us. I feel like feel more confident in just in taking care of her in general and then also to know that okay if she's going down and she's sleeping soundly I have this block of time to get things done so it's kind of funny because I feel like my 
like old type A Kristen has kind of come back into the picture where I'm like really scheduling things while also still going with the flow and you know not stressing out if like she wakes up early and I didn't get something done you know what I'm trying to say I don't know it's just but it's nice to have those those windows where I'm like okay I have probably this amount of time to get things done so in those windows what those sleep windows I have been working on the book edits for Arcane Haven so I'm actually about halfway through and I've been really dedicated and I couldn't start this the first week because I had no idea what her schedule or her patterns were. But the past like three or four days, I've been in a routine and a schedule with the, the book edits. So that's felt really good for me to get back into that. And at this rate, I'm actually going to finish this first round of edits by the end of July like I had planned. So I'm, I feel very proud of that, especially having a newborn. I'm like, okay, like I feel like I'm rocking it. Some days, not so much. Some days it feels like I'm failing miserably, but <laughs> today's one of those days where I'm like, yeah, I got this. I'm crushing it. So that is my two week postpartum update. Like I said, everything has been going well. Of course it is an adjustment and we're just, we're just doing the best we can with the tools and the resources that we have, but it's it's going it's going well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed coming along and I hope that it wasn't triggering. That's why I put a trigger warning because I know for some people if if you had a traumatic birth experience or a traumatic, you know, like C-section experience, I just want to make sure that um sometimes the the sounds or the audio or even just the visual of seeing like the blue drape can be triggering for some people. So and Lacey's in here too. <laughs> Hi Lace. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign off because we are getting to that point where she is about to wake up. So I'm happy I got to film something here during her sleep window. But thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video, whenever that may be. <laughs> Bye.